Northeast Ohio's number one choice for news. Cleveland's own Fox 8 News starts now. Thanks for joining us for Fox 8 News at 7 o'clock. I'm Elizabeth Nureka. Our top story tonight, three of nine people charged in the death of an Ohio University student last year pleading not guilty in court today. 18-year-old Colin Wyant's body was found in a house used by the Sigma Pi fraternity. Nine people are charged in his death, including a man from Northeast Ohio. 22-year-old Elijah Wahib of Westlake, a 2016 graduate of St. Ignatius, was president of Sigma Pi at the time. He now faces several charges, including hazing, assault, and obstructing justice. Wyant's cause of death was listed as asphyxiation due to nitrous oxide ingestion. He was seeking to join the fraternity at the time. In the summer before he went to college, I actually talked to Colin. Ohio University at first denied the allegations, later expelling the fraternity chapter. Well, he is scheduled for his arraignment tomorrow at 3 p.m. A local police officer striking a plea deal just as testimony was beginning in his trial. He was accused of making up false charges in a drunk driving case. Just a day after opening statements were given in the trial of North Royalton police officer Steve Zahersky, the officer entered a guilty plea to an obstruction charge. A video obtained exclusively by Fox 8 News shows a local man pushing his SUV into the Black River, setting into motion a rescue operation by first responders. Hey, we're kicking it at the Shaker Heights Police Department with the K-9 unit. It can get a little loud in here at times because the dogs are so excited that we're here. With me is Commander Masnardo. He's going to introduce us to the teams and the dogs, and we do have a loud one here today, too. Yeah. He's a little excited. Igor's our youngest, and he's really excited. He's excited to have you guys here. Hi, good morning. So right now we're going to put Igor to the test. He's very excited, so we're going to try to get to him as soon as possible because he's going to lose his mind in a second. Yeah, but we're going to be excited. doing odor identification. Talk to me a little bit about how these dogs are trained to find a whole host of things. So one of the disciplines that our dogs are trained in is odor identification, which could be, in Igor's case, is narcotics. But we can also do explosives detection. Hey sis, so right now is the piece de la resistance, as we call it. We're going to do a little aggression training demonstration or apprehension demonstration commander so what we're going to do is we're going to demonstrate the ability for our canines to make an apprehension if we had a fleeing suspect or somebody trying to hide from us this is roman this is roman and Dave, officer dave amla and then <laughs> officer hagan is down there he's going to be our squeaky toy for the day so go ahead dave thank you Good boy. Oh, look at that. So what he just demonstrated there is his ability that even though he deployed him and sent him for that apprehension, we always have total control of the tool. And when we deployed him, we decided it wasn't time for him to go and we stopped him. We have that ability not only when they're on lead, but when they're off lead. And that is critical for us as handlers to be able to control the dog like that he just listens that well he listens that well and now and even though again he thinks Oscar Hagen down there is just one big giant ball he <laughs> just wants to play with his ball and we're gonna let him play with that ball right now <laughs> so what's he doing right now he's so, so focused on his apprehension techniques that he's not even worried about us at all he is he right right now he's <laughs> let's spin so what he's doing other way what he's doing is he's just, again, <laughs> this is like a toy. And now we can, he's not paying attention to me. We can come up here. We can pet him. We can play. So you can pet him. Because he just wants to play with his toy. Also, Hagen, even though he's getting a little tired, he's just a big old toy to Roman. And look, he puts his paws around him. He wraps his, his paws too. around him. And he just, this is what he wants to do. They love this. And it's not because they're being aggressive, but it's because they're playing. And they think this is just play, and this is what they love doing when they come to work every day. So we'll let we'll let Officer Emma call him off. Roman. All right. And so I'm other gonna arm. put. No nope, other arm. Oh, other arm. We're yep. gonna put on the bite slave, and he's gonna <laughs> get so, get me. <laughs> so this is one of our other tools. This is a bite sleeve, just a sleeve, and there's there's padding in here, and there's a bar, so Liz could hold on to this and. And protect myself. 
<laughs> He's very, dance, very dance. strong. You have to. <laughs> He's dancing with me. Take your hand and right. hold it here. Hold, hold it on the end there. And so you could see again. Good boy. <laughs> Roman just. <laughs> He wants he's very to play, strong, yes. But he's really strong. So as long as until you call him off, he's gonna He's gonna <laughs> hold on. He's gonna try to take me to the ground. He's <laughs> gonna hold on until we tell him to let go. Or if you wanna let the sleeve go, because right. again he thinks it's his ball. <laughs> So now he won in his he mind. Won. He won the battle. He won the battle. And, me. So, and you <laughs> see how proud he is. So talk to me too a little bit about why German Shepherds? Why are they kind of the breed of choice for canine units? So with our with the German Shepherds, they're just so intelligent and they're such a well-rounded animal. A lot of us have families and we want these dogs to be able to be social with our families and be a pet with us at home. But then when they're here at work, we want them to be able to be a great work tool okay. for us and in the community. We want them to be out in the community and be able to meet and greet our community mm -hmm. because the canines help us be more approachable. And so with them being social like this and being able to go back and forth, that's probably the German Shepherds the best breed for that. Well, Commander, we certainly appreciate your time today and showing us all the great stuff that these canines do. We appreciate what you guys do and we appreciate what the canines do. And of course, may God keep you safe. Thank you. Thank you. That has been, it's been awesome. Wow. Elizabeth, we are a little yeah. nervous so for you. Much. Are well you done. okay? Elizabeth, you're a lot braver than, than I am, I'm telling you. You know what? I thought he was going to take me down. He's pretty strong. So yeah. it kind of makes me feel pretty good knowing that these guys are out here, you yeah. know, keeping us yeah. safe. I know because that's right. they're certainly capable of doing so. I'm not going to mess with them. Yeah. That's for right. sure. <laughs> A historic vote on Capitol Hill is expected any minute now with lawmakers in the House of Representatives deciding whether or not to impeach President Donald Trump. Lawmakers on both sides have been debating this impeachment all day on the House floor and at times it's gotten pretty heated. Thanks so much for joining us for Fox 8 News at 7 o'clock. I'm Elizabeth Nareka. The vote will likely lead to a trial in the U.S. Senate, but before they vote, members of the House had a chance to be heard. Fox 8's Suzanne Schaffer joining us now with more on today's debate. Suzanne. Hi, good evening, Elizabeth. He is at a rally in Battle Creek, Michigan, where I'm sure we will hear him say a few things about what's happening today on the House. Absolutely, and no real surprise is expected to come from this. Obviously, Democrats have the majority in the House, so it is expected to pass. It does look that way. I mean, they're right mm -hmm. down the middle with those party lines. I think there was only one person who crossed lines and is changing parties, but other than that, it's straight down the line. All right, Suzanne, thank you very much. And again, we are anticipating a vote to begin at any minute. We will, of course, bring it to you live when it happens, right here on Fox 8 and on our website, fox8.com. A 13-year-old boy falls off a slippery break wall along the Lake Erie shoreline and is rescued by police. Officers were called to Rocky River Park after a teacher reports that while on a field trip with a small group of students, one of them slipped into the chilly water. The officers couldn't see the boy in the water or find the teacher. It turns out the group had wandered onto private lakefront property. Officers eventually found the teacher on the break wall and the boy down below. Dave, thank you. Officers in one local community got to spread some Christmas cheer today. They surprised some drivers who were pulled over for a minor traffic violation. Instead of getting a ticket, those drivers got a friendly warning and a $100 bill. This is now a favorite holiday tradition for officers in the village of Doylestown. They stop drivers, explain why they were stopped, and then hand out a friendly warning and the cash. Drivers stopped were extremely happy and thankful two-day event. Elizabeth. Lou and Tracy, there are so many candidates. The debate had to be split into two nights. In fields this large, it is hard to stand out, and that was the tough task for those on hand tonight, especially those who are less known. Ten candidates took the stage tonight. The other ten will have their chance tomorrow, making their case for what sets them apart from the others. They didn't attack each other for the most part. Instead, it took turns taking jabs at President Trump. The 10 other candidates that made the cut for these debates will speak tomorrow. Of those are Senator Bernie Sanders and former Vice President Joe Biden. And of course, uh, the President Trump was quick to respond to tonight's debate. He certainly was, Tracy. One of his tweets that he commented on tonight had to do with some technical issues that they had on the, one of the networks that was actually streaming the debate. Mm -hmm. But his initial tweet on his reaction to what was going on 
simply boring in all capital letters. All right, Elizabeth, thank you. On two candidates who have been there before. Well, that's right, Tracy and Lou. Senators Bernie Sanders and former Vice President Joe Biden are no strangers to presidential debates. And tonight was their night to once again try to appeal to voters. And it comes as no surprise they were asked the first questions in tonight's debate. But you also had a lot of new names who have been in the headlines a lot lately, making names for themselves as the next generation of the Democratic Party. These heavy hitters making tonight really the marquee night of this two night events. At times, moderators had a hard time getting the candidates to stop talking over one another or talking out of turn. One thing they all did agree on when asked is that they would want to provide free health care for those here in this country illegally. Aside from attacks on President Trump, age seemed to be an issue consistently raised, with some of the younger candidates singling out candidates Biden and Sanders, saying it is time to pass the torch to a new generation of Americans. All right, many more debates stick. Our politics. Democratic leaders are hoping to make a deal with Mitch McConnell on the rules of the trial, then name impeachment managers to prosecute the case in the Senate. Once the House resolution is adopted, the articles will be transmitted to the Senate. Meanwhile, President Trump reacting today on Twitter, once again calling the impeachment a hoax. He also retweeted memes and videos from his supporters who stand with him. Tracy and Gabe. A rare surprise here today, Liz, because a lot of folks thought that this would automatically go to the Senate, but no, Pelosi says not yet. Not a lot of people expected this to happen, and she can hold up this process for quite some time, so it remains to be seen what happens. And, of course, it keeps the president from being acquitted, which would unravel all that the Democrats have work to do. So many twists and turns mm -hmm. in all of this, Liz. Thank you. Turning now to the weather, we're taking a live look right now from our Science Center camera. No snow falling, so that's some good news. But it is very cold outside, and that's where we find Andre with more on what we can expect tonight. And Andre, I hope you have something on your head. Do you have your little earmuffs? Your oh, okay, good. And the gloves. Yeah, good, the wind good. is not when we come back. All right, Andre, we'll see you then. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Well, a local man tried to kill his boss, and the Foxy I team has exclusive video showing how he tried his best to get away from police. As I team reporter Peggy Gallick tells us, the man is now admitting to the crime. In Cleveland, Peggy Gallick, Fox 8 I-Team. Peggy, thank you. Sentencing is set for early next month. The victim is expected to talk to the judge. At that time, the suspect could be sentenced to more than 20 years behind bars. Authorities have arrested a Lakewood man for the murder of his son. The Akron Division of the Northern Ohio Violent Fugitive Task Force found Richard Lundy. They say the 41-year-old was arrested nine years ago and later convicted of three counts of felonious assault. Lundy had been released from a state prison in September. His child had serious head trauma and died in April of this year as a result of three separate assaults. Lakewood police charged Lundy with aggravated murder last month. Uh, the House voted to impeach President Donald Trump last night, but House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has not yet said when she will turn the impeachment articles over to the Senate. Pelosi says she wants to know that a trial in the Senate will be a fair one, but Republicans in the Senate say the House rushed through the impeachment process and are now getting cold feet. The Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer wants some of the president's closest allies to testify, including White House Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney and former National Security Advisor John Bolton. McConnell has already rejected that request, but Pelosi says they are hearing support from across the nation.